welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another exciting episode of Tales of Heroes. This is episode number 43, right here on the Game Fire Network. As always, I am your host, Bridger, and with me is my co-host, Vittensby. We are bringing you a different show than we had planned on doing. If you listen to the Bridger rant this week, you'll have heard that we had a little bit of technical difficulties uh, last night when we recorded the show. We're recording a different one today in the hopes that when we re-record that match will have some more fresh perspective than if we just recorded it yesterday. Gonna make it what it deserves. So, we are almost live from the year 1944, about to bring you the match of this week. And this one is between Mike Rosa and uh, somebody else in a ranked game online. And we could not get the matches that we wanted to get because all the people that we wanted to get to play them we're all playing opposing fronts. <laughs> There's not much we can do about that. Hey, do you want to come play uh, play play with the Americans and and the Wehrmacht? You know, the one that you've played a thousand games with. Shut up! I'm going to play the British. You know, so it's uh, a little bit harder than we expected. And uh, my co-host Vittensby did manage to secure this match for us. Vittensby, why don't you tell us about this one? Sure. Despite my crows of playing opposing fronts all the time uh, <laughs> these days, he did say that he had a replay that was rather short but sweet. Uh, showed off some pretty good maneuvers over on the all-famous and favorite Angaville. Uh, he said he was playing against that. that both of them are on Smurf accounts. I'll be. Um, it appears, uh, and he's playing. Under what was he, who's he playing under? Because I'm on the other perspective now. Um, my crows is playing under uh, Mew Fist, and then Gimp is the one he's playing against. Another Smurf account. I don't know. I, I don't see. remember who that is. So the, the other uh, Gimp, so to speak. The battle of the Smurfs shall unfold in just a moment. But uh, his uh, main is Zeko Labo. I believe I said that right. So. Uh, yeah, we got another match here on Angerville, and I wanted to thank Mike Croza for... I've been bugging him for a while to uh, play a match for the show. Uh, he's been quite busy, to my understanding, and uh, now he's preoccupied with the pros and fronts and real-life stuff. So I'm really happy to finally get a match of him on the show. Uh, he's one of the best players in the game, so I expect some good micro despite you playing this at 2 a.m. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Alrighty. All right. Well, we're at the five-second mark. We're going to get started here in five, four, three, two, one. Unpause. And we've got a standard two-engineer opening from uh, from Microza on the Allied side here, on the American side, I should say, uh, with a barracks opening as well, which is fairly customary on uh, on on Angaville. You can see some some weapon support center, but it's not not as common, I would think, as the barracks opening. Sort of the 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 good old standard fallback rifle spam tactic we'll see if he, he might pull out a jeep first or second to do some interesting harassment moves but that'll that'll have to wait and we'll have to find out exactly what happens we have a single pioneer start is that what's going on over here yep looks like a traditional non non-traditional i should say it'll always become pretty traditional um one pioneer start yeah about the weapon support center on uh angerville there was a time about three four months ago where that was all I would play on Angaville, but that lived very, very shortly because I was so sick of rifle spam and the same old, same old. Uh, my crow is doing a pretty, pretty popular strategy, going straight for the fuel. Um, those early fuel caps. I'm assuming he probably wants to fast tack, and as you can see, as the conversation unfolds, this is truly the battle of the Smurf. <laughs> but uh, that's what I've been playing on forever, so. I don't blame these guys. I mean, sometimes you don't have time to spend playing 10, 20 games and raising up a rank. You just want to have a little bit of, and little bit this, of fun. <laughs> Gimp has a smurf sense. <laughs> he says, I have a feeling that you're not really a level 7. <laughs> okay, so we got an interesting Jeep coming out second here, uh, as uh, predicted by myself. It was a shot in the dark, it, you know, 50-50 chance. There's the, uh, the single sandbag build with the Volks that you can take cover behind if the allies come to try and um, stop you from decapping this high fuel point. I assume that's what he's doing here. Actually, he's building more than one. Looks like a double. Yeah, that's interesting. You you see this more often nowadays, but it's still not commonly used because on Angaville, you uh, you really are kind of hard-pressed. But as access on Angaville, especially with the one uh, Pioneer start, you want to get that second Volks out there before you engage because you'll have the advantage for a brief moment of time. 
uh, definitely counters the rifle jeep opening and uh, as long as they get that extra engineer and it definitely counters a rifle rifle opening because you have to wait to get the, the extra manpower and my god that was a loud man down in my ear. <laughs> now we've got a uh, oh a bike on the field here. It looks like, I don't think the Rifleman and the Jeep, even if the Jeep's being repaired, is going to be able to do much against this, especially since he's he's got his Volks within easy reach of that sandbag. Even a second Rifle Squad isn't going to help him too much here. This is a very, very good maneuver by the Axis player, putting up that sandbag, getting a second Volks there before he starts to decap the point. So the Allied player did not know exactly where his unit, where his opponent was. By the time he learned of it, his opponent not only was decapping the point, but also had backup units there to support him. So it took him a while to get his his rifle squad back over there to fight it. Whereas, like you mentioned, if he had simply gone and capped the fuel as soon as he could, then the allied player would have had time to bring the rifles and the jeep over early, um, or at least the rifles over, to try and stop that before there was Volk's reinforcement. So that was actually very well played by the Axis player. I'm very impressed. Yeah, if I ever do that strategy, although I don't personally prefer it, uh, I do like to follow it up with a fast bike. I would call that milking it for all it's worth. So, uh, But then, you know, the bike in the long run, I think, is kind of a disadvantage. But uh, it does give you that initial boost that will help secure your side on uh, Ingeville. Uh, and here comes a, an MG. It looks like my crows went for a, a, a high point cap, as I would probably call it, uh, didn't necessarily link it on the right, but uh, now it's linked up, and he's got pretty solid map control on the left. Uh, certainly, my least favorite aspect of Angaville as Axis is uh, trying to switch sides, and uh, now that my has the, the right side, um, the Axis player will, for all intents and purposes, have to be aggressive at some point. Uh, no real victory points being capped by my It's not really... I don't know, I like to cap an early victory point, kind of like uh, Gimp does, and I'm never going to get tired of saying that for some reason during this match, but uh, it, it's interesting that he's not capping it. I mean, as you can see, it does put the pressure on. He's already down 40 VPs, and, uh, you know, in a long, highly contested mid-game, that, that can really affect uh, the way you play. Yeah, absolutely. So he's got a unit just sitting there. He's, I guess he's too busy microwing over here and trying to figure out what he wants to do. But it prob that's probably a mistake, I think, uh, an error if we were in baseball, that he should at least have this engineer squad. Now he's actually building a fuel, uh, 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 an OP. So I guess that's what he had that squad waiting over there to do. So I can't fault him too much. He was just waiting for the manpower to get that up. Um, now he's going for the VP, which is definitely what he needs to do. Um, I, I feel you, Mike Rosa. That's exactly what I would do in this situation myself. I am so tired of trying to switch sides with, with even allies at this point and walking into, you know, MG and then another MG and then three Volk squads, you know, uh, there's not a second MG in this case, but uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty risky and, and, and can lose you games against well-placed MGs and really good Axis players. Um, you'll notice he has an early flamethrower. Yeah. That's a pretty common strategy. Um, I would say I believe he's probably going straight to Tier 4, trying to get out a Sherman as fast as possible. Yeah. Um, definitely not getting a quad if he's putting an early flamer on there. Um, that would be my, my guess. Yeah, that makes might sense. might lose a squad there, though. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's good to trade a rifle squad for a bike, but he's just barely made it out. No! I can't believe it. <laughs> the last burst from the MG42. Wow. Oh, yeah. That's priceless. And he's even even in his base. Yeah. That's uh, not something He was almost home often. free. <laughs> wow, that poor guy. <laughs> he tried so hard. Oh, well. But I guess, yeah, that that's not too bad for the Allies. They did get a bike in that exchange, at least. And now they've caught yeah. the MG undeployed. That was very good. They're going to be able to roast this thing. Here it comes. Definitely. Absolutely going to demolish it. There it is. Now Oof. they've got a machine gun. That's never what you want to have happen if you're Axis. And your enemy's going rifle spam. You do not want to give them a machine gun. Because now he doesn't have to go weapon support center and get a machine gun. He's, that's a, such a use, it's not even funny how happy I am when that happens, <laughs> when I play allies. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and uh, my crows seems to agree, as long as he goes and remands it. I mean, I was, I'm always concerned when you build a, uh, an observation post that you can be overwhelmed. I'm very surprised he's getting a motor pool out, but uh, 
not, I guess, you know, in, in retrospect, he has been able to keep his side, and the munitions income is at 43, so uh, it's an interesting decision. Usually when you're playing on Smurfs, you're not executing like you're, hey, this has won me 89.5% of my games. You know, you're trying something else out, so uh, not sure if he had a plan for it. We do have a Comcraft Center coming out in level one veterancy. Wow, look at being, all those folks. Uh, That's three squads researched. at least. Holy crap. How many squads is that? So, sorry? Is that three Volk, Volk squads? Three Volk squads, yeah. yeah. I've never seen so many in the same place. That's pretty interesting. Now he did reman the machine gun <laughs> and he's using it against the Volks. But not quite. Not quite. He's still got it to use and that's just so useful as an ally, especially when you have, you know, the suppressing power of, uh, of the MG42 to use back against the Axis. That's not something that they normally have to deal with, so sometimes it's sort of just a psychological advantage here. Yeah, it's definitely a psychological advantage, and uh, it's going to be pretty hard for the Axis player short of Tier 3 or, uh, you know, a Mortar. I'm not sure if Grenadier grenades and Grenadiers would even be able to get close enough to it to launch a grenade, but uh, it seems like now everything's kind of all scattered to hell. Um, we do have an M8 out. Yeah. And, uh... Hmm. I assume that's because, uh... I don't know. I, I always like the M8, especially if you got a gunner on top. It's not that bad. It's very, yeah, it's I mean, fairly good against infantry. And it's a little bit more survivable, I think, than a half-track. The only difference is, of course, it can't... It, it's got the other option that it, that it has the extra gun, and it can clear out buildings a lot better than a half-track because it's got that extra gun. He looks like he got the upgrade for armored skirts, because I saw an upgrade, but I didn't see any gunner pop out. So he's got double health on that M8. Yep, it looks like we have Blitz uh, chosen. Uh, we do have Stormtroopers out, which is a good counter uh, to fast quads, M8s. Well, not a perfect counter, but certainly a good counter. Some would say better than Grenadiers. Uh, but, uh, I mean, you can take with the M8, you can take the trade-off. You want an M8 with armor skirts and uh, with the the gunner on top or do you want a quad I mean it's up to you in most situations you'd probably prefer a quad especially in Angerville but mostly because of suppression you know, right yeah you might want to spend your you know your uh, what did I say munitions you might want to, yeah I mean since you get the option of armor skirts one and or the other you could technically get an early flamer and not have to worry too much about it but yeah this, this match has kind of gone all to hell and uh Everything's being spread out. So, yeah. Uh, that's, <laughs> Three of the middle that's... strat points are decapped and nobody's been able to take them. <laughs> that's pretty interesting. One thing, though, the Axis player has lost their fuel twice now. And uh, that's definitely a big problem for them. I mean, actually, not as much for Axis as it is for others, but um, he's definitely going to have, uh, he's, he's going Kriegs Barracks now, it looks like, which is about the only option he has with no fuel. Yeah, he really only has 40 fuel income right now. Um, certainly, I don't know if he could afford to wait to a Sturm 40 Armory. 40 fuel income or 40 fuel? A fuel 40 fuel is plus 10 income. Okay. I'm always surprised to see uh, a Kriegs Barracks go up when someone chooses Blitz, but uh, I don't think that he had I don't know. Maybe, I don't know anything about this player. Maybe he's a tier two player and likes to go blitz with it. But it's uh, we've always said it's not the best complimentary yeah. complimentary choice per se. It's definitely odd. Yeah. So let's see. But, we've got. I don't think we have a doctrine choice yet for the allies. He's got two CPs, almost to three. And I don't see any uh, any design here. But you can just see how weak that M8's gun is, like the main gun, unless you get the upgraded gunner. So I think at this point he's just using it mainly to harass and as extra, you And know, drop a mine. Don't miss the oh mine. Oh yeah, is that what he just did? Someone's gonna, one of those folks is gonna move and gonna walk right over it. I, I didn't see that's thought. what he was doing. That's yeah, the oldest trick in the book. <laughs> so the Axis, can the Axis, if you're watching from the Axis point of view without the Fog of War off or anything, can you tell that it's dropping a mine? Yeah, if you look for it and you're watching that M8, you can see the little uh, little smoke. Well, I, I guess you call it dust cloud come out from below. Let's so, watch uh, and see if they move yeah. here. I'm tempted because I want to watch the mine explode, but I'm, there's a big, looks like pretty big Axis victory right now. Because these barred infantry are, are going down pretty hardcore. 
There's just too many axes here. Yep. Yep, the mine killed. Did it kill that whole squad? No. No, there. Nope, that's no, a pioneer squad. Retreated. They retreated. I believe it did kill the whole squad. Right yeah. There. I see nice. four dead guys there, and that's how many I saw that were alive last time. I think that mine did very effectively. Yeah, either the mine, and I noticed there's a rifle squad there, so it probably helps. But uh, oh, the rifle squad we'll probably see. finished them off. And there, that position right there for the MG, right between the hedges, is so brutal. Uh, it might not be 100% well placed like that, but basically right in that general area is pretty brutal. And we have uh, the pack doing what it does, well, what it actually does, which is counter motor pull pretty effectively. Oh yeah. But here it's gonna get flamed. Not yep. good. Uh, that was a good move, retreating the engineers. There wasn't, he wasn't gonna get a good trade there if he just killed the, the crew. You know, I played a game today and I actually got both of the supply art upgrades. I find if you go left side of armor, it's actually possible to not have to worry about fuel too much because the 7 CP version. I mean, it depends on the game. I actually posted that game on GR. It's not my best game because, well, opposing fronts is one reason and work is another reason, but uh, certainly I think those supply art upgrades actually really help. So uh, maybe left side of armor with supply art upgrades could be some kind of interesting strategy um, to, to think about. Now I still don't have a doctrine choice for the allies. We got four CPs, another Greyhound on the field here. He's getting armored skirts again. Um, he got 156 fuel. He could really go for a tank depot right now and have a Sherman out in about three minutes, maybe. Yep. He's he's had that OP fuel on the right pretty much secured almost the entire game, so he should really push that advantage that he has in fuel here. He could start pumping out Shermans pretty soon. Um, the opponent's got eh, opponent's got Panzer Shreks and 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 one AT, so you'd have to watch out for that. But certainly, a Sherman backing up all of these infantry would be very useful. Especially with that MG to back up the Sherman, that could, that is going to be invaluable against uh, against stormtroopers or any anything else that might try to flank the Sherman and, and use Panzerfaust on it, or Panzer Shreks rather. I don't know about uh, because they are stormtroopers. It might not necessarily work perfectly, but you know we'll have to see. I can't believe that M8 is still alive. Uh, they. Oh no! It put down a mine right there! Killed the entire squad again! Oh my god! The medics just rush on over and pick up all the bodies though. He's gonna get a free squad out of it. That's not too bad. <laughs> I can't believe that. <laughs> best strategy, best tactic yeah, ever. Yeah, that was the best mine placement ever. Twice. <laughs> What looked like a clear that. allied victory is uh, is continuing to look pretty much in their favor. I still can't believe. I, I guess it's because the the storm squad was pinned when they went into the bunker. He dropped another mine there. It looks like because the storm squad was pinned when it went into the bunker, it wasn't firing the Panzer Shreks out at the M8, which is how that survived that long to place the mine there. Yep, we're gonna have to see some serious grenadiers popping out of there um, at this point. I think the Pretty, medics are all dead, though. I don't see any of them. Yeah, I keep on... Well, they're, uh, they're oh, picking they up the bodies by the AT, but... Uh, yeah, this is really a sticky situation for the Axis player, although he does have a... Uh, a, a stuff available, but... Uh, oh, we've got I mean, Armor Company, by the way. We've got Allied War Machines, so we're going... Oh, my to, God, uh, another mine on the medic bunker. Yep. That was just a brand killed. new Grenadier squad. <laughs> he just got get, that from all the dead bodies. <laughs> now he's going to get another one, though, even though the medic's dead. <laughs> He'll get another one if the medic gets up. And uh, Oh, never mind. He's not going to pick up that, that particular one. So you heard it here, saw it first here. This is how my crows encounters the medic bunker. I'm yeah. Gonna mine here, I'm going to mine there. Yeah, I'm going to mine there as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Take that. Take that. All right. But... Uh, so I guess that's an interesting way to deal with uh, medic bunker issues. <laughs> but still uh, no tank depot. I'm kind of surprised. I'm, you know, I would, I'd like to say I was, but Shermans just don't do what they used to do, and uh, the game's so infantry centric now that uh, it's it's a huge risk going down 800, you know, manpower basically 
and uh, delaying, you know, two or three squads on the field. Maybe in this situation it's not too big of a deal, but uh, most of my experience since, you know, 1.6 at least, starting in 1.5, um, it's just too damn risky to go uh, to go straight, like text straight to tanky, but you got to kind of take it slow and uh, play out the infantry war like yeah. you see happening in this game. Well, he's got 261 fuel. I mean, it just it just makes me confused why he would OP the fuel point and waste 200 manpower early in the game. Nice stud shot. Three dead riflemen. Um, why he would waste the MP, 200 MP early in the game and go a squad down to, uh, to maybe he changed his strategy. He might have originally been going for an early Sherman. When he saw those Shreks and the, um, and the pack, he decided to avoid it instead. Go for a yeah. longer infantry war. Yeah, right now uh, the active player, despite having very bad map control, does have a slight advantage. Uh, he has quite a bit of anti-motor pool on the field right now, with the AT on the left, the Sta on the right, the Panzer Shrek, the Gren uh, Volks Grenadiers, and he's laying a mine. So uh, he could potentially, this is his moment to kind of rally. I don't know how well he'd be, he'll be able to do it because he's down so badly on the uh, oh, no, capital power. But, uh, AT was left all alone. He's got a Grenadier squad to come back it up. How many CPs is he away from a Pershing? He should be pretty close. No, he's actually he's gone down Calliope side. I, I apologize. I, I forgot which one armor. I, I never go armor company. So um, the um, the Allied the right War Machine side, leads yeah. to Calliope. I'm gonna remember that from now on. I should I should clearly know that. <laughs> nice. Here comes the Grenadier grenade. Very nice timing. Only got one of the guys. Yep, but uh, I don't know. See, at this point in the game that I've played today, well, not this point particularly. The guy actually went with Blitz versus Armor. I mean, I went left side, but uh, I don't know. I think if you're not gonna, if you're pretty close to your purging, or you know, like, hey, I'm not gonna build a tank depot with my fuel, right? It's not that hard to go down, you know, 100 manpower, or so to get the uh, supply art upgrades, and uh, certainly. I'd, I would personally probably experiment more with that. Uh, it's just something I found very useful, especially when you have, you get into like you know 25, 30 minutes, start to get into a big manpower war. It, it really helps out, and uh, that quad just pretty much got owned on the right side. Especially, it seems to me, um, if you're not going for a tank depot, then you're going to want to at least think about the supply de the supply depot upgrades. Yep. And uh, it looks like it's almost all over, but the shouting. We do have a Clive come out. Uh, oh, yeah. Interesting, yeah. Some interesting tactics uh, with the M8 mines. Um, that's one of the most fun tactics to use because you never know just how much you're going to kill. And sometimes it's absolutely ridiculous. But uh, half track's gone on the right side. A little more EXP for the. For the act, a stug gone on the left side. A stug gone on the left side. Yeah. Flyby barrage coming in on the left Ooh, side. Ooh, here it comes. XP, XP, XP. I think he killed the whole squad there. He got a retreating squad to hit the dirt. I don't see any way the Axis player can come back from this one. Uh, not even if he's got a Tiger coming on. Eh. Tiger might yeah, bring he... him back in the game. He's still got some infantry left. He's got some Panzer Shreks there. And the allied player has a rifle squad, another rifle squad, and a machine gun. That's about it, though. So, we're not seeing a whole lot of infantry on the allied side. We've got an engineer as well. I'm sorry, there's the allied infantry. It's all reinforcing, so he's still got plenty on the field there. That's no real problem. What was that? Magical sounds. Let's see if anything happens at the end of this game here. Microza is certainly in a strong position. An M8 mine again, taking out the majority of a Grenadier squad. Now he's going to do a what? A base rush here? This is kind of crazy. Kind of crazy, but he's got all the map control. This is basically... I mean, the fat lady... Has already been on stage and is now off the stage. She's done singing. He's got another M8 mine right at the HQ. Waiting for these guys to come back and run over it. Not quite. Didn't retreat from the right angle. We'll see if they do. 
We've actually got the Stu taking out the Calliope a little bit. There we go. And he's back. Excellent. So, yep. we had an M8 mine at the HQ. I can't tell if it actually killed the squad or not. I just heard it go off, but I missed it. I don't think it killed the squad. Right behind you in the replay. And by the way, you need to call your ISP again, I think. <laughs> <We'll> <laughs> they did not fix the problem. You know, that reminds me of my uh, internet problems not uh, too long ago. I had to come it's out okay, about It's okay. It's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm moving in a, lo a little while anyway. So, the Allies solidly in control here. They got another stun on the field, which leads me to believe they don't have a Tiger, right? They don't have a Tiger available? No, oh, no. no! Oh! Oh, the XP! Oh, the humanity! <laughs> there we go. Lots of green numbers there. I love how you get XP for just blowing up carcasses of tanks and such. That's always fun. <laughs> Is this M8 gonna, like, get a rear kill on this? Because that would be awesome. M8 kill a stu. <laughs> Come on, let's see it. Come on, 5% bug. Go, M8, go! Oh, you missed. No, you blew your chance. That's it. M8, you're out. AT gun. It's all AT gun. There we go. Double vet AT gun now. Not even not even a Tiger could pull him back into this at this point. I mean, the Allies just have too much infantry on the field to support what they got. Yep, this is... Uh, if, if nothing else, it was a great replay to demonstrate how to use Calliope's well and yeah, more the specifically the, uh, the M8 mine drop. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, I, I have not seen M8s used very well in the past. I've seen them used, and they do get... Sometimes I've seen, like, suicide M8s thrown at my base. I've seen that happen <laughs> before. But he did a good job of keeping his M8s alive. He moved them in, like, right before he was winning a battle or right, you know, early in the game when there was not much, uh, you know, enemy anti-armor on the field where he was able to just go in freely and place those things and get out before too many Panzerfaust hit him. So, yeah, that was very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it was an interesting uh, tactical replay. Uh, my crows did tell me it wasn't going to be extremely long, uh, as I had said. So I wasn't expecting, you know, one of those grueling matches like we had yesterday. <laughs> oh, tales of technical difficulty. Why? Go that figure. was such a good. Yes, we were. The you were calling it the lost tales of heroes episode. <laughs> it's, it's the lost tales of heroes episode. Nobody will ever hear that exact one. Hopefully yeah, we'll so I just called it OMFG again. WTH. So. <laughs> All right. But, uh, <laughs> good so, stuff. That'll wrap up this week's replay. Sorry it's getting to you late, guys. And uh, sorry we couldn't get, you know, uh, a, a super better one. This is some, you know, some good players that uh, the match wasn't super great because everybody's playing opposing fronts. This is a match that was left over from before opposing fronts came out, so it's difficult to find a replay. Hopefully we'll get uh, get another one for you next week. If not, we'll use one of these good ones that we have lined up. Send your user-submitted replays to talesof at gamefire.com. Those always tend to be at least very entertaining, if not, you know, super great on the micro. Talesof at gamefire.com. We need 1.71 replays. We've only got, like, one. So chances are, if you send in one of your replays that you found really entertaining and you think that'll make a really good show, go ahead and send it to us because we don't have any for 1.71. All the old replays are 1.7, so we need some new ones. And uh, let me uh, highlight the, 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 the shows that are most likely to make it onto Tales of Heroes are going to be shows that are entertaining to watch with a lot of crazy cool explosions and stuff but also you know shows that you can't tell who's gonna win until you get down to the last 10 minutes or so if you can tell who's gonna win like you know halfway through the game then why even bother casting the last half you know so this one is still kinda he could have can't make a comeback until the last five or ten minutes there but let's it, oh you know what else it showed encounter to the medic bunker we were talking about before anyway Good game, thanks to Mike Croza and his uh, nameless Smurf opponent. The Battle of the Smurfs is over, and thanks everybody for tuning in. Tales of Heroes, number 43, is over.